we know how to find the exact area under a curve. We know how to evaluate an integral using the fundamental theorem of calculus, and now we're going to relate the two. So here we're going to take these summations and we're going to convert them into integrals, and then we're going to evaluate. So recall our RAM, where we're saying the limit as n goes to infinity from k equals 1 to n of f of a plus k times b minus a, the quantity of b minus a over n, which is our delta x. So then we're going to multiply by that width of each one of these rectangles. And as n goes to infinity, the width goes to zero, the number of rectangles goes to infinity, and we get the exact area. So when we compare this setup, we can see here that a equals 1, and that here we have 2k, 2k, and then a 2 over here, b minus a equals 2, so then b equals 3. We're going to go from 1 to 3 of, now what's our function? We're taking, this is our x value, so it's x squared plus 3x, and we're multiplying that by delta x, and as that goes to 0, it becomes dx. And now we have a straightforward integral that we can evaluate. And we have x cubed over 3 plus 3x squared over 2, evaluated from 1 to 3. Plug those in, we'll have 9 plus 27 over 2 minus the quantity of 1 third plus 3 halves. We're subtracting the 3 halves, so that'll be 24 over 2, which is 12. 12 plus 9 is 21, minus 1 third, so we'll get 20 and 2 thirds. And to stay consistent with this idea of area, we have a height times a base. We're going to have that height in parentheses. So use your parentheses. Over here, we're going to do a similar thing. We have, this time, we have 2 plus 3k over n. This is telling us that a equals 2, b minus a equals 3, so b equals 5. Our function is going to be 1 over this x value. So we're going from 2 to 5 of 1 over x dx. And when you evaluate that, we're going to get the natural log of the absolute value of x evaluated from 2 to 5. Now, in this situation, since our a and b values are both positive, we don't really need to worry about our absolute value, but always start with it. So we'll have the ln of 5 minus the ln of 2, which can also be written as just ln of 5 halves to make it more compact. Let's go to number 3. This one, again, same basic setup, but this one's a little bit different. So we can see here that a equals 1. But when we look here and we see 2 over n times k, and over here we have 1 over n. We don't like that. We need to make sure they agree. So what we need to do is make this 1 into a 2. So how do we do it? We're going to multiply by a clever form of 1. We'll multiply it by 2 over 2. When we do so, we can take this divide by 2 and pull it out in the front. So we'll have 1 half times the integral. of, oh, maybe I should finish this part, b minus a now equals 2, so b equals 3. So we can go from 1 to 3 of, so we, we have that agreeing now, we're going to say this is 2, this will just be x squared dx. So when we evaluate this, we'll get 1 half times x cubed over 3, evaluated from 1 to 3. Now I'm just going to pull that. You can go about doing this multiple different ways. So if I pull that 1 third out, so I'll have 1 6, and then 3 cubed will be 27 minus 1. So we'll get 26 over 6, which will be 13 thirds. In the next one, we look and we can see a somewhat similar. This time we have the 1 over n's in front of it. It doesn't really matter 
it's all multiplication, so the commutative property of multiplication. But we have that same issue again. Here we have the 1, but over here we have, and this one's not even so easy to read. So let's rewrite this and see if we can see that a little bit better. So we'll go lim as n goes to infinity, sum from k equals 1 to n. And I'm going to rewrite first. This is going to be cosine of pi over 2 times k divided by n. And that way we can see what we really want here is pi over 2. We want this thing here to be pi over 2, that 1. So what we're going to do is multiply the top by pi over 2 and the bottom by pi over 2, which is equivalent to saying we're going to multiply by pi over 2 to the top. And then I'm going to multiply by 2 over pi to the front. And again, since it's a constant, we don't need to worry about it. We can just take it out of the summation. And similarly, we can take it out of the integral. So we'll have the cosine of pi over 2k divided by n. And now we can see, since this isn't there isn't anything in front of this delta x part, we're going to say a equals 0. b minus a is pi over 2. So b is pi over 2. Now we can go ahead and write our integral. So we have this constant out in front, 2 over pi times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the cosine of x dx. The antiderivative cosine would be sine x. We're going to go from 0 to pi over 2. We'll leave that 2 over pi out in the front. So 2 over pi, the sine of pi over 2 will be 1. The sine of 0 is 0. So our answer will be 2 over pi. One last one. Let's take a look at this one because it looks a little bit different. Right now we have k equals 0 to n minus 1. So this is no longer m ram, or I mean r ram. This is l ram. We're now going on the left side. But what happens as n goes to infinity? L, M, and R are all going to go to the exact same height values. So it doesn't really make any difference as far as what we're doing. We can look at this again. We have A equals negative 1. This time our delta X agree on the inside and the outside. So we have B minus A equals 4. So B equals 3. We're going to go from negative 1 to 3 of our function will be e to the x dx. So that's just e to the x evaluated from negative 1 to 3. And we get e cubed minus e to the negative 1. And you don't need to do anything for simplifying that. And that's all there is.